tonight. It is going to be a um, uh, commercial airline pilot captain uh, who's going to talk about the, the gyro system. So let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, dear Mark, please, he, um, and he's remaining anonymous for, for the time being, but uh, we, we may get him in before it's over, and uh, you'll see why as I read the letter. So, dear Mark, please don't use my name. I'd prefer you refer to me as Mac. M-A-C-K. I'm a career commercial pilot. Please don't use my name. I'd prefer you refer to me as Mac. I'm a career commercial pilot, and I'm currently serving as a senior captain on the B777 fleet of a flag carrier airline. He's not going to name which airline for obvious reasons. I came across your Flat Earth clues recently and thought I'd share something with you. Before I do, I need to explain some technical details. I'll try to keep it short. Please bear with me. And I've, I've read through this part already, and uh, it's you got to listen. Be, try to listen closely. Be, you know, keep in mind the details are pretty technical. You know, I, I, will, I will try to dumb it down if I can. So the ADIRU system, also known as the Air Data Initial Reference Unit, we pronounce it IDARU, IDARU, oof. It's a horrible name, but I'll, I'll keep trying. I, Daru, is the standard in modern avionics. It's at the center of a modern aircraft's avionics system. This has been the case for some 20-odd years and has replaced the old uh, internal, I'm sorry, inertia navigation system, otherwise known as the INS, which was a standalone reference for the navigation computer. I, Daru offers, one, ring laser gyros. No more mechanical spinning discs on gimbals. The RLG uh, are on a tethered or strapped down platform. The ring laser gyros. Two, the integration with other systems. IDARU provides a reference for other systems like the ADIs, weather radar, yaw damper, thrust control, etc. It used to be the case that all of these systems were independently referenced with dedicated gyros. And three, much greater processing power. Whenever IDARU is started up, it needs to be initialized or aligned. This is where the system calibrates itself to the spin of the Earth to prevent drift. The procedure involves entering your latitude and longitude coordinates and commanding the initialization. During initialization, no systems that reference it can be on and the aircraft must be stationary and stable. Even loading luggage or catering supplies can disrupt it and cause an error. This takes from between 5 to 17 minutes, depending on how far from the equator you are. And by the way, as I was reading this the first time, I thought for a while there he was going to be, you know, a pilot, finally a professional that comes out against flat earth. But that's not where he's going with this. So bear with me, all right? Uh, Now the story, if you're still awake. In October of 2015, I was commanding a routine six-hour flight. When it came to initializing the IDARU, it returned an error. This is not all that uncommon, and it usually takes on a second attempt. After a few tries, we just got the same thing. Error. I called the tower explained the situation, and they sent an avionics tech out. I'm sorry, tech out. He ran his check in the avionics bay and said that it all checked out and that the fault was only with the initialization module inside the box. In this situation, they would normally just unplug it and slide a replacement box in there. However, it's a rare occurrence and has never happened to me. Unfortunately, there was no replacement available at this location. I called the company and reported the situation. After about 20 minutes, someone got back to me and advised that they could get a replacement box to me, but would take about 12 hours. Or, since my flight plan was not outside of ground radar coverage, I could use GPS as a primary reference and adjust the Aderus data via ATC manually and periodically to compensate for drift. I decided that the later suggestion was within safe limits and made the decision to continue. As instructed... I had my first officer regularly call ATC for ground radar positioning and make necessary adjustments to the IDARU data. However, throughout the entire flight, and this was a six-hour flight, no drift occurred. This was a real head-scratcher, and since it's company policy and my personal policy to understand as much as possible about the aircraft and its systems, I wanted to know why. I talked to someone at our fleet maintenance department and was told that they didn't make repairs to any black boxes, and I should talk to the manufacturer. In this case, Honeywell. I contacted Honeywell and managed to talk to a senior IDARU engineer. He was very helpful. It turns out they don't make the ACM, the Alignment Calibration Module, which looks a bit like a desktop PC hard drive painted bright orange with warnings printed on it, do not open, serviceable only by manufacturer. It turns out that there's only one company that supplies these modules to all avionics makers, and nobody else seems to know anything about their workings. 
I tried contacting the company and was just given the runaround. This is very strange since pilots are usually welcome anywhere in the industry. I could show up unannounced at Boeing and get treated like family. After a lot of digging, I found out that this mysterious ACM manufacturer is a contractor to NASA, and that's all I can find out. To date, I've been unable to talk to anyone there and still can't find out anything about this ACM. It feels like I've hit a wall, but I'm still digging. To be fair, I wouldn't describe myself as a flat earther. I'm just someone who wants this question answered. If there are any breakthroughs on this, I'll let you know. Feel free to use any of this on your show, but please remember to refer to me as Mac. I did consider allowing you to interview me, but this time I don't think I'm comfortable with that. I'll let you know if I change my mind. All the best, Mac. Wow. Okay, so let me break that down for you real real quick. So inside the gyro system that he was talking about, the gyro system in this case, the black box, was made by Honeywell. The alignment calibration module is not made by Honeywell. It's subcontracted out by another uh, company, and that company has it sealed to where the, only they are allowed to work on it, but they don't ever work on it. They just swap them out. They just swap out the parts. So what happened was this particular alignment module broke before he could fly. The weird, you know, the, on the weird circumstance, they couldn't get a new one in there, so he flew the six hours without using it. And the plane should have drifted because of the curvature and the Coriolis effect, otherwise known as the spinning of the Earth. And it didn't. The plane didn't drift for six hours on a triple seven. That's a flagship, top, you know, top of the line stuff there. Why didn't it drift? And he was trying to figure out why he couldn't figure it out. And in the process of trying to figure out uh, what happened, he discovered that this module, there's only this module is made by exactly one company, and they supply every airline in the industry. And when you try to call them, they don't talk to any, they don't talk to you. And they're a subcontractor for NASA. Remember what I said about if you want to plug the holes, you want to do it very securely you know, when, it, when it comes to hiding things, and this would be that thing. So <laughs> to keep the pilots from not worrying about it, you tell them there's a guidance system inside their plane that accounts for the curvature and the spinning of the Earth, and it doesn't. And you hope to God something like this doesn't happen to where it breaks and the pilot goes, well, wait a minute. How am I flying normally without that, th- without that thing working? How, wh- why have that thing in there at all? And when you call the company to figure out what they're actually doing, they won't talk to you. That's brilliant. That's a, that's, a, that's a great thing. And I would love him to come on the show if he had, if he had more to talk about uh, or even just talk about this. I'd love to, love to have him on. So if you're listening out there, Mac, uh, I, would, I would love to, to chat it up with you about this. It's a, great, it's a great little story, and I love it, and I'm so glad at least you put yourself out there. Uh, and, of course, you can come on anonymously. You know, if you're a 777 pilot currently, I've got some friends that are 777 pilots. Uh, you, you, please, you know, by all means, I, I will give you complete uh, anonymity and, uh, you know, love, love to have you on. So. Thank you, thank you to Mac for putting that out there, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great thing, uh, a great little piece of evidence, and that is the gyro systems. Because people kept asking, it's like I get that call, I get that uh, question all the time: is how did the pilots miss it? How did the pilots miss it? And not only are they not looking for it, but in this case, they're they're given equipment that tells them that the curvature of the Earth and there's a spinning, and it's it, it's not there. So wow, amazing. 